Hello everyone. The functioning of different organs and organ system that support the life of organisms are called life processes. So today let us discuss something more related to this in our lesson life processes. The first subtopic is criteria to decide whether something is alive. The most important criteria to decide whether something is alive is movement. All living things move without the help of any external help. Some movements are easily visible like the movements of body parts. Some movements are not easily visible like molecular movements. The molecular movements in cells and tissues is necessary for all life processes. Life processes Life processes are the basic processes in living organisms which are necessary for maintaining their life. The basic life process are nutrition, respiration, transportation and excretion. The first one nutrition is the process of taking food by an organism and its utilization by the body for life processes. Second one respiration is the process by which food is burned in the cells of the body with the help of oxygen to release energy. Third one transportation is the process by which food, oxygen, water, waste products are carried from one part of the body to the other. Excretion is the process by which waste products are removed from the body. The next subtopic is nutrition. Nutrition is the process of taking food by an organism and its utilization by the body to build the body for growth, to repair the damaged parts of the body and for energy. Modes of nutrition First one, autotrophic nutrition is the nutrition in which organisms prepare their own food from simple inorganic substances like carbon dioxide and water in the presence of sunlight and chlorophyll. Example, all green plants and some bacteria. Second one, heterotrophic nutrition is the nutrition in which organisms get their food directly or indirectly from plants. Example, all animals, fungi and some bacteria. Types of heterotrophic nutrition There are three main types of heterotrophic nutrition. They are saprotrophic, parasitic and holozoic nutritions. Our next subtopic is nutrition in plants. Photosynthesis is the process by which plants prepare food by using carbon dioxide and water in the presence of sunlight and chlorophyll. The food prepared is carbohydrate which is stored in the form of starch. Oxygen is released in this process. Equation of photosynthesis is 6CO2 plus 12H2O in the presence of sunlight and chlorophyll gives us C6H12O6 plus 6H2O plus 6O2. Chlorophyll are the green pigments present in the leaves. If we observe a cross section of a leaf under a microscope, we can see cells containing green dot like structures called chloroplast which contain chlorophyll. Stomata are the tiny pores present in the leaves through which exchange of gases take place. Each stoma has a pair of card cells which controls the opening and closing of the stomatal pore. When water enters the guard cells, it swells and the pore opens and when the guard cells lose water, it shrinks and the pore closes. Activity to show that chlorophyll is necessary for photosynthesis. Take a potted plant having a variegated leaves, that is the croton plant. Keep it in a dark room for 3 days so that all the starch is used up. Then keep it in sunlight for 6 hours. Then take a leaf from the plant and mark the green areas of the leaf on a sheet of paper. Then dip the leaf in the boiling water to make it soft. Then dip the leaf in alcohol and heat it in a water bath to decolorize it and remove the chlorophyll. 
then wash the leaf in water and dip it in dilute iodine solution it will be seen that only the green parts of the leaf turns blue black this shows that chlorophyll is necessary for photosynthesis activity to show that carbon dioxide is necessary for photosynthesis Take two potted plants of the same size and keep them in a dark room for three days, so that all the starch is used up. Then keep the plants on separate glass plates. Keep a watch glass containing some potassium hydroxide near one plant to absorb carbon dioxide. Cover both the plants with bell jars and seal the bottom of the jars with Vaseline to make it airtight. Keep the plants in sunlight for 3 hours. Then take a leaf from each plant and test for starch. The leaf of the plant kept in a jar containing potassium hydroxide does not show the presence of starch. This shows that carbon dioxide is necessary for photosynthesis. Nutrition in human beings. Nutrition in human being takes place in the digestive system. It consists of the alimentary canal and glands which produce enzymes which breaks down food into smaller molecules. The main organs of the digestive system are mouth, esophagus, stomach, small intestine, large intestine and anus. The main glands are salivary glands, gastric glands, liver, pancreas and intestinal glands. In the mouth The food is broken down into smaller particles by the teeth and mixed with saliva from the salivary glands. Saliva contains the enzyme salivary amylase which converts starch into sugar. Then the food passes through the esophagus into the stomach. In the stomach, the gastric glands produce gastric juice which contains the enzyme pepsin, hydrochloric acid and mucus. Pepsin breaks down proteins. Hydrochloric acid makes the medium acidic and helps in the action of pepsin. Mucus protects the wall of the stomach from the action of the acid. Then the food passes into the small intestine. In the upper part of the small intestine called duodenum. The food is mixed with the bile from liver and pancreatic juice from the pancreas. bile breaks down fat into small globules pancreatic juice contains the enzymes trypsin and lipase trypsin breaks down proteins and lipase breaks down fats in the small intestine the glands of the walls of the small intestine produces intestinal juice the enzymes of the intestinal juice converts carbohydrates into glucose fats into fatty acids and glycerol and proteins into amino acids the walls of the small intestine has several finger like projections called villi having blood vessels it helps to increase the surface area for the absorption of the digested food the digested food is absorbed by the blood and transported to all cells in the body then the undigested food passes into the large intestine In the large intestine water is absorbed and the waste material is removed out. Respiration. Respiration is the process by which food is burnt in the cells of the body with the help of oxygen to release energy. Types of respiration. There are two main types of respiration. They are aerobic and anaerobic respiration. First one aerobic respiration. It takes place in the presence of oxygen. It produces more energy. The end products are carbon dioxide, water and energy. It takes place in most organisms. In aerobic respiration, glucose is converted into pyruvate in the cytoplasm in the presence of oxygen. And then in the presence of oxygen, pyruvate is converted into carbon dioxide, water and energy in the mitochondria. anaerobic respiration it takes place in the absence of oxygen it produces less energy 
द एंड प्रोडक्ट्स आर लैक्टिक एसिड और एथेनॉल कार्बन डाइऑक्साइड एंड एनर्जी इट टेक्स प्लेस इन द मसल सेल्स एंड ईस्ट इन एन एरोबिक रेस्पिरेशन इन मसल सेल्स ग्लूकोज इज कन्वर्टेड इन टू पायरोवेट एंड इन द एबसेंस ऑफ ऑक्सीजन पायरोवेट इज कन्वर्टेड इन टू लैक्टिक एसिड एंड एनर्जी इन एन एरोबिक रेस्पिरेशन इन ईस्ट ग्लूकोज इज कन्वर्टेड इन टू पायरोवेट एंड इन द एबसेंस ऑफ ऑक्सीजन पायरोवेट इज कन्वर्टेड इन टू इथेनॉल कार्बन डाइऑक्साइड एंड एनर्जी दिस प्रोसेस इज कॉल्ड फर्मेंटेशन रेस्पिरेशन इन ह्यूमन्स द मेन ऑर्गन्स ऑफ द रेस्पिरेटरी सिस्टम आर नॉस्ट्रेल्स नेजल कैविटी फेरिन्स लेरिंग्स ट्रेकिया ब्रोंकाय ब्रोंक्योल्स lungs and diaphragm air enter through the nostrils the hair and mucus traps the dust particles it then passes through the pharynx larynx trachea bronchi and then enters the lungs the trachea has rings of cartilage which prevents it from collapsing when there is no air in the trachea The bronchi divides into smaller tubes called bronchioles which ends in tiny air sacs called alveoli. The alveoli is supplied with blood vessels through which exchange of gases takes place. The alveoli helps to increase the surface area for the exchange of gases. Mechanism of breathing. When we breathe in, the muscles of the diaphragm contracts and moves downward and the chest cavity expands and air enters into the lungs when we breathe out air the muscles of the diaphragm relaxes and moves upward and the chest cavity contracts and air goes out of the lungs so this was all about our lesson life processes life processes are important to carry out daily life activities they help us to produce energy and maintain homeostasis in the body so learning about this is very important thank you students